Hello, I'm Maris Fuliam from Greenberg Consulting. And this video I want to make about the, um, the SunSync Inverter. And I want to specifically talk about the features that you can control via setting up the work mode. Um, really concentrating on two things is how do you control power to critical and non-critical loads? And how do you control load shifting? So, let's go. This thing will just listen to me. Okay, so this is a system diagram. You'll see it's slightly different than, than the one that you see on the Samsung screen, but yeah, it's just busy rearranged. I like to arrange things in the the way that I read, so power comes in at the left top and it goes to the bottom right and also goes to other places. Okay, so this is a power coming in from the street. Um, really talking mostly to South Africans um, because we have a ESCOM that is fairly broken and we need to protect ourselves um, against power failures, regular power failures. Um, Sometimes when it's scheduled, it's called load shedding. And we protect ourselves against that. And then at the same time, apart from being very unreliable, they're also very expensive. And therefore people want solar panels to save themselves electricity. So what I've shown here, power coming from the street, a sensor where the power comes in to see how much power actually coming in or out. Then you have the solar panels that uh, produces power. And in sunny South Africa, we get quite a good yield. Um, you've got non-critical loads, which is the loads that sits directly um, connected to the incoming power. It is connected to the grid uh, on the SunSync inverter. And the big thing you can see there is the power can flow coming in to the inverter and the inverter can push back to the non-critical loads. Um, what you see here, is everything that generates heat. So it's geyser stove, kettles, toasters, air conditioners. Okay, there's a pool pump that doesn't heat hopefully. And then general heating devices like space heating, your hair dryers, things like that. Things, if you have a two, three, four hour power failure, you can do without it, okay, for two hours. And secondly, they use a lot of power. So that's essentially what makes something a non-critical load in my books. Right. Then, okay, you've got the battery and then you've got your critical loads. These are things that don't use a lot of power, but they irritate you. Um, like LED lights in the evening, TV and decoder. Um, and, okay, PC, laptop. You can include a printer there, a small printer. Uh, in that as well. Alarms, electric fences, garage door openers, fridges and freezers provided. I would say that they at least A plus, A plus, A plus, plus, but A plus is okay. Uh, except if you have a very big system, um, then it probably doesn't matter. But yeah. Okay, so this is the system diagram that we'll keep on referring to. And I'm going to go and look at the work mode setup. So there's two pages, there's work mode one and work mode two. I think they should be the other way around, but this is the way they chose. Um, so I'm going to look at work mode two um, and I'm going to use three examples. The first one is a system which push, push back to non-essential loads and to the grid. Now, in other words, you push power back here to this and you push back power into the street as well. You'll see, okay, there's maybe a bit of a changes in the battery, but essentially you always power the critical loads and you always accept power uh, from the PV panel. So that doesn't really change with the work modes. It's more how you deal with this and how you deal with that if you've got excess PV power. Um, that's the, the crux of uh, what we are talking about. So let's go back to our first example. So what we do there is we say, okay, um, this is zero export. I think it's a bit of a misleading description because it, what it really says is that you are activating the mechanism where you are measuring the current going to the inverter 
and you are using um, you are using this part of the features of the inverter. So the description to me is is actually quite stupid because zero export is, is not the right wording. Right, then you say, okay, I want solar export. In other words, I'm going to take solar power and export that, and I'm going to export it to non-essential loads. That's really what solar export means. And then you can see here, limit, inverter power limiter. Now, this is not the inverter power limiter. This is the power that you are feeding to the grid. So again, an exceptionally bad description. Uh, of the of the tick box okay um, if you do this if you set it up you solar export and you say I want to push back 2000 then it will push a maximum of 2000 back into the grid it will power these devices these are your non-essential devices sitting there um, so it will take solar power and push it back to non-essential devices um, but it won't push more than 2,000 watt back into the stream. Okay, and as I said, you always provide power to the UPS or to the critical load, as they shown there. Okay, so that's the first example. You set it up with a tick there to activate the whole mechanism. You use solar power export, um, and you export a maximum of 2,000 watt or 2 kilowatt to the, to the stream. Second example, um, <clears throat> you want a system with pushback to non-essential, but not to the grid. In other words, you want that power there to be zero. Okay, You want that power to be zero, you make it zero there. So you limit the power being pushed back to a street over there. Okay, You use the same there, zero export to activate the mechanism. You've got uh, solar export, which means that you um, you push back to the non-essential loads. As I said, you always push power to the essential loads. But in this case, you do have zero there. You're not pushing anything back into the street because you made that zero. Third example. Okay. So what you've done here is you said uh, zero export, activate the mechanism, you export solar power. But you limit it to load only. Now, as soon as you tick that box, you can see it doesn't push back to non-critical loads. Okay, so that is not shown there. And you also don't push back to the grid. You see there's not even like there. You've got an indication of how much power is being pushed back. And here you don't even have those little blocks. So as soon as you tick that, you, you delete this whole part where you push power back to the grid or to the non-critical loads. Uh, in this case, the PV is here in any case, so it's not pushing back something. And I, I haven't really experimented with it, um, but I assume as soon as you tick that box, then this isn't really relevant. Um, because you're saying don't push back, so it doesn't matter what you say, how much you're actually pushing back. Right, so that is the uh, work mode two. Uh, work mode one is used for load shifting. Now, by load shifting, I mean that you get solar power during the day, you load your batteries, and in the evening, you want to take that power and you want to use it, uh, which increases your utilization of your solar panels. And what you got to do is you got to take your battery and decide, okay, I want a certain portion of the battery, let's say from 100% if it's full, down to 60%. We'll use that in our example. So down to 60%, I actually want to use that in the evening, irrespective of whether there's power failures or load shedding or not. Then I want to reserve 60% for in case you have a, a power failure, so the first 40% you use in the evening in any case, and 60% you reserve for load shedding. And that's really uh, what we're going to set up here. Now I'm going to actually pull up a spreadsheet where I am going to uh, fill in figures to show you how you actually set this up. So I'm, 
as I said, I'm going to use an example where we want to use the first 40%. In other words, from 100 down to, 40, to 60%. I want to use that uh, in the evening, um, irrespective of whether there's light shedding. Now, there's a, a couple of rules here in terms of the time scales. You've got to cover the whole of the 24 hours, and there's not allowed to be gaps, and there's not allowed to be overlaps. Uh, I set this up to, um, what I did is, you'll see these numbers change if I put the inputs here. I just did it for convenience, but what you'll see is really just system mode one is the screen in this, in this blue portion. So, I'm going to do something. I'm going to say from zero to six o'clock. We have, um, a, I'm going to define that as a time scale. Then I'm going to define for one o'clock. You'll see now why I do that. Well, it's explained just now. Let's say from three o'clock in the afternoon till, call it 21. Um, now let's make it 18. Doesn't matter. Till six o'clock in the evening, till nine o'clock in the evening, and then till midnight. So I start at midnight, go to six. Um, then I go from, from six o'clock to one o'clock in the afternoon, one o'clock to three o'clock, three to six in the evening, six in the to nine, and nine to twelve. So you'll see there the whole 24 hours is covered. There's no gaps and there's no overlaps. Okay. The power stays, if, if we assume that you've got a five kilowatt something converter, it stays at five. Um, now, let's say the state of charge. Okay, so what I'm saying here is I want the battery to be kept higher than a certain level. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say 60%. So from zero to six o'clock, let's say you had a power failure somewhere in that period and the battery went down to 30%. Then I'm saying that the grid should take the battery to at least 60%. In other words, the grid pops up the battery and loads it so that it doesn't go below 60%. Now, what of course happens here is as soon as you get a power failure, then you can say, okay, the grid, keep it at 60%, but the fact is there is no grid, so it's going to go down less than 60%. And that's really what, what you're doing here. Um, but then if, if the power comes back on, it will take it to 60%. Um, by the way, you've got these six slots that, as I said, you've got to use. So, yeah, in some cases, you'll just repeat lots. I find it easier. I think you can just not tick it. At, okay. Um, I think it's more, it's clearer and it's, it's more convenient just to do it like this. Then, why well, put this 13, uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon to 3? I sort of believe that the battery should at least be full once a day, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the sun and your PV panels have not charged your battery to 100% by 1 o'clock in the evening, it's probably a cloudy day with rubbish weather. So I'm going to say, okay, if it's not 100%, by one o'clock in the evening, then in that two hours, take the battery up to 100% using grid power. I'm going to skip generator for now because I'm showing a principle here. And whether it's grid or generator is, is, is another issue that we won't cover yet. Right, then from three o'clock to six o'clock, I'm going to say, okay, now if the battery, keep the battery at 60%, and I'm going to say 60% there, and I'm going to say 60% there. Okay, so this is how I set it up to achieve the following. The battery, the first 40% in the evening, if we don't have, um, if we don't have PV power or solar power anymore, the sun has gone down, then the grid will keep the battery to at least 60%, except for between one and three o'clock in the afternoon, as I explained. I like to get a battery full once a day. It's just, that's me. Okay, you don't have to do it, but that's what I like. And then um, 
For the rest, you keep the battery at 60%. And then if the power goes off, then, um, then the battery can go lower than 60%. So this is how you would set up the, uh, the screen, um, as I showed on the spreadsheet, uh, to achieve load shifting. Um, right, as I said in the beginning, my name is Maurice Free. I'm from Glenpro Consulting. And um, yeah, we do domestic, commercial, and uh, turnkey projects, um, industrial, commercial, uh, and domestic. So yeah, feel free to contact us uh, if you have a requirement.